on your multi award winning channel of choice movie tv i'm your daily host my name is andrew mwans now the debate on president lungu's eligibility has resurfaced with justice minister given Luinda warning that if prominent lusaka lawyer john sangwa state council goes edged to challenge the nomination of president edgar chagwalungu who is seeking another term of office on account of eligibility it would be recipe for anarchy According to the proponents of the debate, such as Kelvin Waliafuwe, President Lungu has already done two terms on account of having been sworn in twice and two different constitutions. President Lungu was sworn in in the first time, January 2015, and for the second time in September 2016. I'll be joined in, in studio by Parliamentary Def Deputy Chief Whip, Honorable Tutu Anguluwe, who is also Kawa Central Member of Parliament. But really, before we can get down to is President Lungu really eligible to contest, let's take a look at this particular clip. Then on the other side, we'll have this particular conversation where we enlighten the nation on the eligibility of President Lungu to contest the 12th of, elec 12th of August general elections. to show the Pope of Zambia this is what we are going to do, vote for us, come 2021, 12 August. What have I done? What are they doing? They, they finished by last year, October, <coughs> putting a consortium of lawyers together, waiting to go and petition the debate of president once he's, he, he, he follows his nomination. My appeal now to my members of youth, through Mr. Kaunda here, my provincial chairman. We want a peaceful elections in, in, in Zambia, in Lusaka and beyond Lusaka province. I was the commissioner this morning, I've assured him of our cooperation. And I'm saying, anybody who becomes a nuisance, arrest. You've uh, instructed us to ensure that our youths across Lusaka province are well behaved. And Mr. Chairman, we want to assure you that we will not take that instruction uh, casually. We will pay attention to the instruction and we will deliver on your instruction. We shall ensure that our youths are well behaved, there's discipline, there is a legacy amongst the youths which is characterized by order and predictability. So we just want to assure you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, with immediate effect, we shall move to improve. Uh, chairman, for the Patriotic Front. Now, if you're joining this conversation, we're looking at, is President Lungu really eligible to contest the 12th of August general elections? My guest this evening is Honorable Tutu Angulube, who is Deputy Chief Whip. Honorable Tutu Angulube, good evening, and uh, welcome to this edition of the assignment. Good evening, and uh, thank you so much for the invitation, and uh, good evening, uh, Movie TV viewers. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, everyone. Those joining the conversation from within the borders of Zambia on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet Channel 1, the top star, Decoder Channel 104. Later on, you'll be able to come through and give us your contributions via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen. Yet those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa, yours are social media platforms. Our handle on Facebook is Ask Movie TV. Our handle on YouTube is Ask Movie TV. You can get to those two particular platforms and give us your contribution regarding the topic we have at hand this evening. We're looking at is President Lungu really eligible to contest? Now, Honorable, my guest on Saturday was uh, prominent Lusaka lawyer Kelvin Waliafube, who made it very clear that President Lungu has served two terms. Now, he was even quoted in one of the newspapers. If I can correctly get one of the newspapers, it should be from the must. Lungu has done his two terms. Valekeni 
Valeria, without really looking at it from a political lens, what is the correct interpretation of the Zambian constitution regarding the eligibility of President Nungu? First of all, I think um, the person who was uh, with you, KDF, uh, is conflicted with uh, a person that uh, we, we don't even wish to respond to. Because first of all, we know that KBF has failed uh, his own uh, description. Uh, we are aware that KBF has been telling people that he's a presidential candidate, he wants to be presidential candidate by default, he wants to impose himself on the patriotic front people. The law is very clear. Uh, in 1996, when the Zambia constitution was amended, the intention of parliament was to make sure that a person who holds office of a president should serve for 10 years and no more. That is how the constitution was. The 1996 constitution was very clear. They made it clear in that they wanted a person to serve not more than 10 years. We had by-elections, presidential by-elections between 1996 and 2016. Hmm. And the people of Zambia, through parliament, went and said, we cannot be having by-elections back to back. You saw what happened in 2008. We had a by-election. <laughs> Before we can get to those, um, you started with the 1996 constitution. Maybe you can begin from there. I didn't really quite understand. Yes, so I'm, I'm giving the background, the background of course, yes, yes. to this argument about how can a president save, how many years can a president save, uh, how, how, what is the term, and so on and so forth. And probably we can I'm begin with, with, with the 1991 constitution. Well, of course. The 1991 constitution was amended in 1996. Of course. So I'm starting from the 1996 amendment. Constitution, okay. Right? You mm. remember when President Kaunda wanted to stand, there was, Parliament quickly blocked him, mm. right, by coming up with an amendment that said a person who has served more than 10, a person who has already served as president for 10 years cannot stand again. So, they wanted to block Kaunda, and they managed to block him using the 10-year rule. Mm. Now, coming to our situation, we, we have, uh, you know, the Constitution Review Commissions that sat and made recommendations through Parliament that we could not be having by-elections within a by-election. Within a span of five years, we saw in 2008, we had a by-election in 2008. In 2011, we had a general election. Mm. Right? Between 2011 and 2014, again, we had another presidential by-election in 2015. And that is why in 2016, in the 2016 amendment, there was a clause that now dealt with the issue of the uncertainty that was created. The uncertainty that was created was that how come uh, somebody was elected for one year, how can we count you know, uh, one year as five years. That was the legal argument that came up. Mm. And so through Parliament, in the 2016 Constitution, Parliament amended the law. They amended the Constitution to define what a term is. Mm. And that is where the 2016 Constitution now became uh, uh, very clear. Because now, if you look at the Constitution, I'm trying to open one here. Please go ahead. The Constitution in, in Article 106 goes to the extent of defining what a term is. Mm. Now, according to this constitution, a term is a period of three years or more. According to the current constitution, the 2016 uh, uh, constitution, a term is now a period of three years or more, meaning a president. That is what the 2016 constitution mm. uh, introduced. And um, I'm surprised that my older brother, KBF, was deliberately trying to mislead the public. Because if you read very clear, we cannot, we cannot for instance, uh, 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 pretend that we all didn't know, uh, or we all don't know that uh, a president is elected for five years. Mm. A president is elected for five years, but a president, uh, the, the office of president can become vacant for any reason other than death. For instance, a president can resign. A president can die. A president can be impeached. A president can be removed from office. And so all 106, which I have in front of me, that a term of office 
Article 1061, the term of office for a president is five years, which shall run concurrently with the term of parliament, except that the term of office of president shall expire when the president-elect assumes office in accordance with Article 105. So, five years, according to 106. If you go to 1062, it says the president shall hold office from the date the president-elect is sworn into office and ending on the date the next president is sworn into office. Mm. 106. A person who has twice held office as president is not eligible for election as president. 1064. The office of the president becomes vacant if the president dies, resigns, or ABCD, ABCD. Of course. Now, KBF is only picking one line. He's picking the one that says a person who has twice held office, right? This and a of sorry, or a person is elected to the office of president as a result of is elected because now we are talking about when the president dies, either the vice president takes over, takes over. or a person is elected to the office of president as a result of an election held in accordance with clause five B. The, the scenario I've given you, of course. the vice president or the president elect. So it has two. It has the vice president who would have taken over, or the president elect shall serve for the unexpired term hmm. of office and be deemed for the purposes of clause three. A. To have served a full term as president if at the date of on which the president assumed office at least three years then has been elected for five years. But for reason or for none, he fails to finish the five years. The vice president automatically takes over. But in this particular scenario, our vice president, Dr. Guy Scott, did not qualify to hold the office of president. And that is why we went to a general election in 2015. And uh, in January 2015, Another, pres another president was elected, and that is... Uh, isn't it that in 20, 2015 we're still using the 20, 1996 constitution, isn't it? We were using the 1996 constitution, but this constitution was enacted before the 2016 general election. So it does apply. It does apply because the general elections were in, in August, hmm. while uh, the president took over office in January of the same year. And if you look at the, con uh, the, the tran uh, transitional provisions of this constitution, this constitution applied or applies to the president because the president was elected in 2016, August, to 11th of August 2016. This constitution came in, 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 in existence on the uh, 5th of January of the same year. So the, the president was captured. He was between the old constitution and the new constitution, and therefore he fitted the definition of the person elected. And so, in, in interpreting, in, in, interpre in, in interpre you know, uh, when we're interpreting his uh, his eligibility, we are using both the 1996 constitution as well as the 2016 constitution. No, no, no. The 1996 constitution amendment fell off in January, on the 5th of January, when the president assented to the new constitution the old constitution no longer applied. What now applied was the new amendment, which is Act Number 5 of 2016, or Act Number 2 of 2016. So the other issue, the other argument that was raised by KBF was handled by the constitutional court in this case, the case of Danny Pule, Wright Msoma, and others. And remember, the Law Association of Zambia also went to court. Yeah, uh, UPND joined the court case, and a lot of other political players joined the case. So for a person to wake up today and say this issue is like this, it means he must either not have read the judgment mm. or is, he is deliberately trying to mislead the public. So as to whether President Lungu is eligible to stand, the question is a very simple in this way. First of all, between January 2015 and the August 2016, was the period three years? Did the president save a period of three years remaining before the next general election? The answer is no. And also, the confusion of saying twice held office means you have been elected 
it, it doesn't make sense because you do not hold office by virtue of being elected. According to the definition of hold office, it means a person has executed the functions of president. So holding office is equivalent to a period of when you are elected as president, mm. you will hold the office of president. You will be holding the office of president. When you are elected as president, you are sworn in, you become president. That is what we are talking about. It's not speculative, right? Some people want to speculate, no, because he was elected in 2015 and was elected in 2016, then he held office twice. It means you have not read Article 106. In the, in the 1991 constitution, as amended in 1996, the president assumes the office of presidents in accordance with clause of an election held in accordance with clause number 5B. The vice president or the president-elect shall serve for the unexpired term of office and shall be deemed for the purposes of clause 3. A, to have served and if at the date on which the president assumed office, at least three years remained before the date of the next general election. So Article 1066 is tied to a general election. Mm. The definition of mm. the definition of uh, holding office or serving as president or full term are tied to the general election. So every five years, because Article 1061 has already told us that the term of office is five years. Five years. Right? But in the event that you take over office before the five years expires, you will save the remainder of the five years. So assuming a, a president is elected on the first day, within five years a president dies, another person either automatically takes over. Now in the, 20, in the, in the uh, 2016 constitution, we no longer have presidential by-election. And that is what KBF probably did not understand. We don't have by-elections. We don't have presidential by-elections automatically when the president dies. Why? Because the running mate, according to this constitution, automatically takes over. But for any reason, if the running mate but, is but, unable but to but take over that, office... But the fact that we went into office via uh, him being uh, vice president, but, but via exactly. him being elected... He was a president-elect Of course, under clause 1065A. He came in as a person elected. Of course. Yeah, because he was not vice president. He was not vice president. He wasn't vice president. By but then. the drafters of this constitution... And many, many are saying, and this is the argument, I think this is why all, all you lawyers get to um, um, miss it, or should I say you get to not to, 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 have, the, to have consensus. Because many argue, uh, Honorable Tutu Angolube, that President Lungu wasn't vice president at the time that he was, uh, in 2015 when you took over office. Yes, he, he was elected. Vice president. He was elected. He was a vice so president. And the law clearly states you don't have to be vice president. You could be vice president or the and, person uh, elected. And the fact that the, the, amended, 20, the amended 1996 constitution uh, sorted out issues of wedding in terms of uh, holding office and being elected, isn't that really a clear indication that in 1996 things you know, completely changed. We're no longer using the fact that one has to, you know, uh, serve a term uh, amounting to five years before they can be considered as president. Yes, so what, what, what you need to do is you need to analyze the two constitutional provisions. If you read the 1996 constitution, it was very silent mm. about the death of the president and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, a person, another person taking over, right? Of course. The drafters of that constitution did not anticipate that. So those issues are not there, right? The people that enacted the 1996 constitution enacted it with a belief that a president who be elected, finishes five years, be elected again, finishes five years, the matter is closed. Mm. Under this constitution now, it is possible, and the constitutional court in the judgment, uh, the, the constitutional court judgment in the Danny Pule case spent a lot of time to explain these issues, and they cleared them. Mm. Let me read a portion of the judgment for the benefit of KBF. It follows that. Let, let, let me go to page number 81. Our firm view at the bottom, our firm view is that it could not have been the intention of the legislature to not provide for the period that was saved and that 
and that settled two constitutional regimes as to how it should be treated. Mm. This is so because, as, a, as stated above, a holistic consideration of the relevant provisions in this case will clearly show that the intention was or is to allow or enable a person who assumes the office of president to complete the unexpired term of, of the office of another president to save a substantial part of the five-year term of office in order for that term to count as a full term. Person to Article 1066 of the Constitution as amended. It follows that the sub-articles in Article 106 cannot be isolated from each other in interpreting the article. As we have already stated above, an interpretation of the constitutional provision that isolates the provisions touching on the same subject is faulty. And this is exactly what KBF is trying to do. Mm. All the six clauses of Article 1066 must be straddled together, must be put together and read as one. KBF has just isolated 1062, 1063, and is, one, is wanting to believe that this is the only constitutional provision that, while it is very clear in legislative drafting and in also a, a statutory interpretation, the courts go deeper than what the wording of the constitution is. They must understand. And I know that if you go to parliament, go and look at the Hansard, go and look at the constitutional review reports, what was the reasoning of the members of parliament when they made this clause? The reasoning was that, one, we must avoid back-to-back -back by elections within a five-year period. Of course. And that's how the running mate clause was introduced. was introduced. And then secondly, the idea was to make it clear. Does it mean when you save for six months, you have saved your term as office, of, uh, as you have saved as president, you can't add another five years? They answered that question in Article 1063, 1066, by saying that for it to be counted as a term of office, right, mm. it must be a period of three years or more remaining before the date of the next general election. So today as we speak, if, for instance, a, a, a president a, leaves office today, there is a period remaining of two months before the next general election. Mm. That cannot be saved as a term. Even if it was two years, nine months, it will not be counted. Why we are not even scared of, of, of KBF? Because first of all, if KBF says he's got KBF, because first of all, if KBF says he's got secrets, where did he get those secrets from? KBF has never served in government. He's never worked as a PS. He's never been member of parliament. He's never been a cabinet minister. He's never been anywhere closer to government circles. He's never been secretary general. Of, of course, the PS. you can say he's, he's been, a, been, he's, been he's a kingmaker where, in 2015. Kingmaker, but you are kingmaker. together. You are together no, with KBF on your pushing let me for put President the Nongo too. Clear. When we were handling the constitution uh, uh, crisis at Mulungushi Conference Center, KBF was nowhere near us. What role did he play? KBF did not play any role at the convention. What of stories were told that you woke up judges, you know? KBF, let me tell you. KBF, KBF, let me tell you. KBF has been saying, I'm the one who declared the president. What does the record show? Is it KBF that was handling uh, the role of, uh, of returning officer? Did he have any letter from anybody? I handled that convention because I was appointed by the acting president, Dr. Guy Scott, and the central committee of the PF. Does KBF have such a letter? You ask him, do you have a letter appointing you as, a, as anybody at the convention? He doesn't. And he has been claiming, when President Sata was alive, he was still claiming he was a kingpin for the president, Sata. Why wasn't he rewarded? Why wasn't he made even a PS or special assistant to the president or even vice president? So he should stop telling lies to the people. We want to tell him if he's strong enough as a, as a kingpin. Kingpins do not cry. They are big boys. He should have formed his own political party like the way Dr. Kambwiri was brave enough to say, let me go and test my popularity. The way uh, Harry Kalaba was smart. Harry Kalaba refused even to challenge his expulsion. He said, look, I'm not going to cling to my Bahati seat. I'm going to form my own political party. What is KBF waiting for? He was expelled more than a, a year ago. And we told him elections are coming. This time around, he would have been campaigning, would have known him as a presidential candidate. So let him not tell lies about having played any role at the convention. He might have attended. Would yes, you know why he was expelled? 
Well, what, whatever disciplinary offenses he committed. Me, I was once expelled from the PF because I misbehaved. I broke the constitution. I was expelled. I, I, I was brought back because I challenged my expulsion. Now, KBF was expelled. He has never challenged his, his expulsion. He has never his, gone his, to court. His reasoning behind not challenging the expulsion is because the current central committee is in illegal. Is, 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 in a, is, is, is illegal. Under which law? Under which clause of the constitution does it say that the cent current central committee is, is illegal? One thing he does not understand is that the central committee of a patriotic front, right, is the highest policy-making organ of the PF party. So who, who chairs the central committee? It's the president. The president. So when, uh, when there's a vacancy in the office of, of, of any position, the central committee reconstitutes and all decisions of the Central Committee are binding and final. So, as far as KBF is concerned, because he does not hold any position in the Central Committee, the, po the Central Committee is illegal. Is that how politics operate? Where in the Constitution, and I want to challenge him, there's a PF Constitution. What does it say about members of the Central Committee? Did you go for a general conference in 2016? You, you, you might raise that issue. We had our extraordinary general conference in the year, Preceding 2016, we had our extraordinary general conference. That was to, and the, to, 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 to elect the president. Of to elect but the after, president. Af after, after. Listen what happened. Mm. It's drawn from the Central Committee itself. The power to reconstitute the Central Committee comes from the general populace. Right? But mm. the power to make decisions lies with the Central Committee itself. And the Central Committee itself resolved that we are just coming from a, one extraordinary general conference. We cannot hold another one just yet, right? And of course, as a party, which, as which a club... That doesn't it amount to unconstitutional... It does not amount to anything unconstitutional. All the positions in the Central Committee have been filled up. They've all been filled Illegally, up. according to KBF. They, it, cannot be, it can only be illegally if KBF is part of the Central Committee. If it's, he's not part of the Central Committee, then whatever decisions... Who, whom does he think he is? Was he there when the PF was being formed? Who is KBF to decide I, I, I can't be chased from PF because who is he? Is he a founder member of the PF? At the Registrar of Societies as one of those that formed the PF. You can only cling like that if you are one of those that formed the party. Not a person who stumbled across the party and woke up to find himself in PF and say, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the PF. Anyone can be a member of the PF. And in fact, if you look at the PF constitution, it does not mandate, it doesn't force matters. It doesn't say the central committee must go and, and hold general elections every year. For, for what we know, next month in April, the, we are going to have our general conference. Doesn't your constitution state that the... Um, the term of office of the president is in tandem with the national constitution. And so if, just like what happened in 2015, you went to another election, that means parliament was dissolved. Doesn't it, you know, uh, stay in tandem with your party, th the provisions of the constitution? Well, wh what we can tell you, the good news is that come next month, April, a general conference, an ordinary one, not an extraordinary one, we're going to have a general conference. So, in KBF, he was, if he was a PF member, he would have contested. But unfortunately, he did what we call in court sleeping on your rights. KBF slept on his rights and he's got himself to blame. Because w when you are expelled or when you are dismissed, the law gives you a time frame within which to challenge the decision. If you do not challenge that decision within that particular time, the matter is closed. Even in court judgments, you, you have a period within which to appeal. If you don't appeal within that period, the matter is closed. So for us as PA, but it's made it clear. the KPF Honorable, issue is a closed chapter. Honorable Tutu, I think it's made it clear that, look, I can't change my expulsion. Because the moment I challenge my expulsion is acceptancy that, you know, the central committee that is in existence is legal. Ask, ask you one simple question. Does KPF recognize the fact that he was expelled? Yes. He doesn't. He does. He knows that he was expelled, and that is why he's saying, yeah, I was expelled by an illegal body. If he is saying he was expelled by an illegal body, why didn't he challenge the legality of the body that expelled him? I was disciplinary committee chairperson of the PF. I dealt with 
serious cases of indiscipline, gross indiscipline, right, under the PF disciplinary code of conduct. And I'll tell you that the PF constitutional, uh, 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 the constitutional provisions relating to discipline are cast in concrete. First of all, depending on the severity of the punishment, a person is given an opportunity to challenge. When they say you have seven days in which to appeal, mm. and you don't appeal, you have slept on your rights. According to the PF Constitution, how many times should, be, should uh, a person be elected as president, according to your constitution? Well, first of all, as far as we are concerned, the PF Constitution mm. actually recognizes the party and government. Yeah. Right? So the, the PF Constitution does not recognize a, a, a by-election like the way the national constitution recognizes it. And that is why there were proposals that we must amend this PF Constitution so for it to suit what the national constitution is. The PF Constitution provides that the party president is head of the, the central committee. Hmm. And so what we, we can only do as at now is as we go to the general... And his lifespan is in tandem with the of national course, constitution. Of course, of course, although the national constitution has now made a few adjustments to include circumstances where a person has actually uh, encountered, uh, you know, was taken over the office of president by virtue of a presidential by-election. So what we are saying is we must also amend mm. the PF constitution to include the presidential by-election aspect so that in the event there's a presidential by-election in PF, we must also state uh, whatever it is. For all we care, the PF constitution has no lacunas. And that is why we are not worried about PF and there's nothing to worry us about uh, the provisions of the PF constitution. What should only worry us now is how do we move on forward? Going forward after the general conference, do we enact a new constitution? Do we amend our constitution? We were not in a hurry to amend the constitution. We were not in a hurry to hold a general conference after one general conference. We were in the morning period. We lost the president. Another president had been elected. Mm. He needed to settle. So there were a lot of factors that led us not to hold a general conference at that time. But I will also tell you that one of the resolutions that the general conference 15 in 2014 mm. was that the Central Committee would decide when a general conference would be held. So if the Central Committee did not decide that we should hold another one, then we would have to wait until this year when there's a general election. Because then now, it is mandatory that the party, because that, that uh, resolution has come to an end. The general conference resolved, one, we have a presidential candidate by the name of Edgar Chagwalunga. That resolution is there. Number two, the party resolved that there will be no general conference. Because you remember, we had a general conference in 20... 15, is it? 14. 14, 14. November. 30th yes. November, extraordinary general conference. 30th of November, 2014. We had a general election in January. Sorry, we had a presidential by-election in January 2015. And so the party, the party's supreme organ, which is the Central Committee, was of the view that, look, we cannot keep going back and forth. Of course, there were a lot of factors, elections, the president needed to settle, he needed to have enough time to look at the affairs of the country than subjecting him to another election when we all know that there's no other person to challenge him. If KBF was interested in becoming PF president, why didn't he contest in 2015? Or 2014 when everyone wanted to express their intention to stand? So he came to the general conference to masquerade as a lawyer and then pretend later on that he was a kingpin, and then later on declare himself as, election, as, as president of the PF. If he was man enough, he would have challenged his expulsion in court. When I expelled GBM from the PF, he went to court. When I expelled Masebo, she went to court. Everyone else, whenever we expelled any person, they rushed to court. He was not in a hurry to go to court because he knows, first of all, even his membership is in doubt, right? His membership of the PF is in doubt. He has never held a position in any of the PF structures, right? He might have his own contribution, yes, to the PF, but he cannot stand and say, this cannot happen unless I say it myself. 
it's clear this but, is but and, and you worried really and you worried um because even the time that i had um, state council um former attorney general that is musa Mwenye, on sunday well his view was the constitution is clear you, you if you're elected twice you're done well f first of all there is a constitutional judgment here the issues they are raising, all Luz. those issues they are yeah. raising all those issues they are raising here the but, 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 court has cleared but them. does that answer President Lungu's eligibility to contest? Because clearly the Law Association of Zambia said that, you know, the, that judgment didn't touch on President Now Lungu. listen, listen. Here, in this Danny Pule case, the Law Association of Zambia was a party, an interested party. Mm. The United Party for National Development through Stephen Katuka was an interested party. The PF Secretary General Davis Muila was an interested party. Everyone mentioned here is bound by this judgment. Law Association of Zambia is bound. PF as a party is bound. The Law Association of Zambia is bound. Here, John Sangwa, State Council on behalf of the Law Association of Zambia, made those arguments you are making, that Musa Mwenye made, and he lost. They raised all those issues. No, but this but, but that. They lost. So as we are speaking, the, the issue of the presidential eligibility is a settled matter it's settled dust there is no question whatsoever and look the other argument that was raised by the UPND was no why they wh why isn't president lungu's name mentioned in the judgment is his name mentioned in the constitution are we making the constitution for president Ed maybe let me ask you simple what, what was the conclusion of that judgment the conclusion of the matter was simple that it is possible for a person who has served less than three years to stand for another 10 years. That is what they said. It's possible. If you have served more than three years, you can only serve another five years. If you have served less than three years, you can stand for another 10 years. That is what this judgment do. In this judgment, they refused to answer an academic question. Because people presented an academic question to the court and wanted the court to the court said no. As far as we are concerned, and probably the court knew why they answer. said they, 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 they couldn't answer. answer because President Lungu obviously wasn't part of of, 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 of of the court proceedings. But let's get to what the minister said. Uh, Justice Minister Given Luinda has warned that if prominent Lusaka lawyer John Sangwa, State Council, goes urged to challenge the nomination of President Edgar Chagwa Lungu, who is seeking another term of office on account of eligibility, it will be a recipe for anarchy. Well, let me tell you one thing. Uh, I don't want to classify myself as anything, uh, but I will speak as an ordinary Zambian. Of course. He will go to the court to say President Lungu is not eligible. He will put up his arguments. Mm. We also in the PF will go to the same court with a judgment in our hands. Simple. That you already discussed that matter and you closed it. Simple as that. We are not even scared or worried. In, in law, there is a principle called stare decisis. Let the decision stay. Don't wake up the ghosts. Let them sleep. Once the courts have decided a matter, it is dead and buried. Unless the court of a similar magnitude comes to overturn it, res judicata. This matter is res judicata. Meaning, it has already been decided by the courts of law, and no one can reopen it. You cannot reopen a closed chapter. It, it seems so. All these things we are talking well, it's, about. It's, it's, it seems like there's a leadership crisis uh, at the presidency level in the patriotic front, because and others, you know, uh, how, uh, how do you how do you accusing. arrive? How do you arrive at uh, well, that it's like, conclusion? Well, we have no crisis. We have a president. We have a vice president. Like, we have you know, everybody. The, the, the only the only person you can you can you can you can put as president is Lungu. No, 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 no. There's no any other person. Let, let me tell you one thing. About and you're dragging him into, into these issues. Let that, me tell mm. you one thing about presidency. The presidency, not president, right? Of you course. must differentiate the two. President is a human being. Presidency is an institution. It's an office. When Tutuangulube becomes president, he becomes part of the presidency. He is part of the institution. The office of the president is an institution. It's institutionalized. 
So regardless of who goes there, the institutions of governance must be respected. The PF knows very well right now as we are speaking. Mm. If you picked on a non-entity like KBF and fielded him as your presidential candidate, we would lose by nine hours in the morning. Even the UPND knows if they picked another candidate other than the one everybody knows, they would lose. Even, even all these small political parties, they know that you go for a stronger candidate. You don't pick presidential candidates like you are picking councillors. A councillor is elected in a small area with a very small number of people. Presi a president must be somebody who will win you an election. For the PF, we have decided mm. that the only person who can win us an election in, 20, in 2021 is the incumbent, head of state. We are not going to play or juggle or, 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 or tumble. Or who, whom are we, first of all, scared of? We are not scared of anybody. But isn't that too much if you, if you refer to KBF as a non-entity? Is that, is that too harsh? KBF though? cannot win any election. Even if he's insisting that he wants to be PF councillor or PF MP or PF president, me I can tell you that he, I can take you just within here, Lusaka, any of these areas uh, that he, he has been even himself, and ask him, do you know KBF? They will tell you we don't know him. He's only known by you people in the newspapers and on social media. I was asking my grandfather the other day, have you ever heard of KBF? They said, we don't even know him. What is he? Is he a man or a woman? He is not known here in Zambia. He's only known here on Facebook. He's only known on TV and in Lusaka. To be president, you must be known countrywide. To be president, to win a presidential election, you need the votes of all the Zambians everywhere. That's why even the HH is very clever. He cannot make a mistake of, 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 of saying, uh, let me pick somebody whom they don't know. The UPND know. The only, their, their striker is Akainde. Even the PF, their striker is, is, is Edgar Lungu. We cannot say, and who are they to tell us, don't field this president? Who are they? In what capacity are they telling us not to field our own candidate? President Edgar Lungu is, is got three characteristics. Number one, he's incumbent head of state, right? Number two, he's our PF candidate. And number three, he's the PF president. So it gives him an advantage over all these other people who are not known like myself. So we must wait. Everyone who has presidential ambitions must wait until the president finishes his term. And then the, the PF will reopen, you know, the search for the replacement. Yeah, that is a but time but when this KBS front is going to move with, uh, well, with uh, President Lungu into these elections because, frankly speaking, in terms of handling uh, the economy, in terms of putting things <laughs> together, because as we're well, speaking now, Honorable Tutu Angulube, inflation is around 22.2 percent. No, but what is causing the inflation? That's a question. Is it the president causing the inflation? But who is the, the COVID situation has hit the greatest economies of this world. Me, I'm a well-traveled man, although I don't like talking about it, but I'll tell you, even the Americans are suffering. America, the superpower of the world, is suffering because of COVID. Their economy is, in, is, 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 in, is going downward. The British economy is going downward. The German economy is going downward. The Chinese economy is going down. But I was started the going Zambian down even economy, before the COVID-19. Of course, but what I'm telling you right now, what is causing the inflation? What is causing the inflation? Is it the president causing the inflation? Or it's the economic circumstances around the world? Inflation is measured... Not locally, it's measured globally. So for a person who doesn't understand economics, they will actually think Zambia is an island on its own. It doesn't know. Who doesn't use the U.S. dollar in this world? We all use the U.S. dollar as a, as a medium of measurement. So if, if, if all the neighbors, Zambia's neighbors and the African Union and everyone is complaining that the economies have gone downward, and in fact, let me tell you that Zambia is doing far much better than most of these countries. Because the late last year was rated as the best performing currency. By who? By the, 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 the global uh, raters. And we also know, we can talk about all these economic challenges Zambia is facing. It is not alone. We are all in it. As a world, we are all in it.
Today we are talking about COVID-19. The other time we were talking about what? We had serious, serious climate change. Mm. But, but, but if, if I'm going to speak about you know, COVID-19 uh, and you're going to pick out one issue of the culture depreciating, uh, look, Zambia has not even been hard hit by the COVID-19. Let's take, for instance, South Africa with over a million cases of COVID-19. Look at their currency. We, you can say Zambia hasn't been hardest hit in terms of COVID, yes, but in terms of the economy, we have suffered. Me, I will tell you that I used to travel. In, I can no longer travel. I can no longer import. I used to import. I used to import. Within six months, I would import three, three four times. Now I can no longer do that. Companies have closed. Even here in Zambia, our, our customers have closed down. The people we used to supply equipment, the people we used to supply, you know, s several items, are no longer operating. They've closed down. Come to, go to any of these shopping malls and see how many people are doing business today. People have been pushed out of business. Not that they've decided to say we are going well, to well, lay off if people. If, if, you're to, if you're going to speak about the yes, the ordinary people, but not the PF. No, I am telling you. If you're going to speak right about now, the PF, we are seeing you pictures right now, the of patriotic are front cadres, honourable, flaunting money, and we are thinking where is the money coming from when you, honourable Tutu Angulwe, is complaining that there's no money in the economy. First of all, let me tell you that uh, there is a term called propaganda. Right? Me, I'm a student of history. I know that Adolf Hitler used to have Dr. Goebbels, right? Saddam Hussein used to have Chemical Ali, you know? And all those guys who have known history, we know who is publishing those videos. None of those PF cadres you are mentioning has been identified by name. They are all being identified by their regalia. You can't say, Tutu Angulube, a PF cadre is flaunting money on Facebook. Mention their names. Today I can wear a UPND t-shirt. Does that make me a UPND card? No. But we, we know we, the people... We've equally seen uh, members of parliament dishing out thousands of quarters in this thousands constituency. Of quarters. Let me tell you this. I have seen a video where a member of parliament was giving people transport refunds of 20 kwacha, and there were only 35 people. That is 700 kwacha. Surely a member of parliament can fail to pay 700 kwacha transport refunds. The other video, the member of parliament was giving 100 kwacha to 10 people, and the people were less than 200. That is less than 2,000 kwacha. And maybe let me also use this opportunity to say, members of parliament come from different backgrounds. There are some big boys in Osaka and on the Copper Belt who came to parliament with their money. They had money. And some people were being told to stand because of the amount of work they had done in the communities. They are wealthy. They've got businesses. They're supplying the mines. You cannot compare them to some, some, some people who have never done business before and they all depend on a salary. So when we talk about members of parliament giving money, let's be factual. I have never seen a member of parliament dishing out uh, huge chunks of money like we have heard on social media. So we must be factual. If there is a member of parliament you know who is distributing huge sums of money to the public, you can mention his name. And I will tell you one thing. Members of parliament get paid. When members of parliament get their gratuity, no one stops them from giving to their communities. And I also mentioned to you that we have members of parliament who run several companies. We have members of parliament who run several businesses. And we have members of parliament who will wait and say, I only donate twice every year, the beginning of the year and the end of the year. So you can't force them. You can't say, where are they getting the money? You cannot compare some people who are being quoted as having distributed money like that. Surely you can even know that this MP, they are just accusing her or him because we who know them know. But even Richard Musuka, Richard Musuka even gave a directive that PF ministers should, PF, you know, uh, MPs and ministers should stop dishing out money. Of course, that directive is in, in good order, right? And I will support that directive because the impression 20 quarters to 100 people are only be giving 2,000 quarters. But the impression created is that I have given out too much money. It's about the impression and about the integrity of the whole pro uh, process. 
So if you know of any political party or if you know of any member of the PF who has been distributing huge chunks of money, mention it to him. We will go and look for him and ask him where he's getting the money. But you have also heard. But uh, that, we can't that ask that because they, they've been telling us that they've been, been getting money from the president. Not at all. The yeah. of the no, uh, we, we've seen this from Honorable Obama and Osambo. We've seen this from quite a number of ministers. We've said clearly that Wakateka is out with MPH. No, listen, let me, I will not, I will not respond because I've not seen that. But I'll tell you one thing. Honorable Obama and Osambo, as provincial minister, right? Mm. He has the whole province. He's in charge of the whole province. He can choose where to, de to donate. And, and the president, if he so wishes, can send him. Nothing stops that. There's no law stopping the president from sending him to pass on a donation. I personally have handled donations to my church. When the president was in Kabwe, we had the fundraising uh, activity for the UCZ at presbytery level. Mm. We went and requested. When the time came to fulfill the pledge, the president passed it on to us. We went and donated. We went and handed over. Right? On behalf of the president. We went and handed over. So the president cannot say, here is money, go out, everyone, go and start dishing out money. There is no such money. And I can tell you that the vice president has clearly stated anyone using the name of the PF or name of the president to distribute huge sums of money is damaging the, the name of the party. And Dora Syria, Honorable Dora Syria, has reported to the police, and there's an active investigation of a suspected PF cadre mentioning her name in a video. It might just turn out to be one of those videos we saw from the copper belts where people were wearing PF t-shirts and masquerading to be PF members and saying to live a PF for this, to just try and bring the the impression that the PF is being careless with the way they're handling the economy. When no, the rumors on Rebotuto and Guluwe that you risk not being readopted as MP on the patriotic front ticket for <laughs> Kawe, you know, for Kawe Central. Have you, uh, have the these, rumors have these that rumors? I risk being uh, not being adopted. Of course. Well, of course, if the party doesn't adopt me, I have a background where I'm coming from. If I'm not adopted by the PF, well and good. I'll go back where I'm coming from. You don't contest. Well, I don't have time to waste. If, if the party doesn't have confidence in me, I would rather go and start afresh. I am not coming from the streets. I'm not coming from the streets. I went to parliament myself, uh, not as a pauper, not as a chancellor. I went to parliament as a person coming from somewhere. I'm a professional. I'm a businessman. I'm a farmer. I'm a consultant. I can't fail to pick any of these pieces and pack them and go. So I know that the PF is adopting me because they have confidence in me. They have confidence in what I've done. I've performed in my constituency far much better than most of these MPs uh, in, in most outlying areas. I've done what, what a member of parliament can do. I've performed my role as member of parliament diligently. I've performed my role as a PF member diligently. So I'm not scared of not being adopted. But if the West comes to the West, I am just to Angulwe. I'm not the owner of the constituency. It belongs to the PF. They can give it to anyone. I will support whoever will be adopted if I'm not adopted. And I will go back to my roots. I've got several roots I can pick on. One of them would be doing charity work. I will continue doing whatever I was doing before I became member of parliament. And I think I, I don't survive. I don't survive as a member of parliament. Honorable Tutu Allow me to thank you so much.